yeah. for me to be in that uh, in my shoes, uh, knowing that I was one of the strongest guys on the planet and uh, traveling the world with people I really enjoyed being with. You know, it was it was uh, the best time in my life. Hey guys, welcome to Big Laws Official. Today on Talking Strongman, we have the world's strongest man from 2001, the one and only Viking power, Sven Carlson. Sven, thank you very much for joining me. Thank you for having me, Lawrence. It's, um, it's so good to see you. I've been trying to get hold of you for a while to, to get you on the show and to have you on now. Obviously, another, another strongman that I used to look up to and watch as a youngster. So it's a real honor to have you on. Thank you for having me. So how are you? What have you been up to? Well, uh, two years ago, uh, my kidney uh, 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 went uh, bad again. So I have um, been waiting for a new kidney now for the past two years. So thing has been put on hold, so to say. Okay. Yeah. So you, how's the health at the moment? Well, for uh, well, I I uh, the last year I haven't been able to train because a uh, hernia I had, oh, uh, okay. not, not nothing really bad really, but you know it's really annoying when you can't train. Yeah. But uh, I was lucky to do the operation before uh, this coronavirus uh, broke out, and yep. uh, at least now I'm back to training again. For this is the third week I'm back in training, so. Yeah. How does it feel to be back? Yeah, in the it, it helps me so much. You know, my head is feeling so much better. In just uh, instead of just uh, looking at daytime television, you know. <laughs> yeah, I think people forget how, or, or they don't realize how important the kind of psychological part of training is to a lot of us. I've seen people, you know, obviously with the gyms closing down and stuff, and obviously there's more important things than people going to the gym. But for a lot of people that are really heavily involved, it, it me mentally it's a huge, it, it's it, it's like therapy for a lot of them. It, it is because you know uh, it's all about uh, a thing you can uh, master, you know. And for some people that could be just uh, doing what they do best. But for me, it's always been my training. So whenever I feel down in life, you know, I just start training, and it usually takes care of the rest from there. Yeah, definitely. So as soon as I'm getting in shape, you know, I get this endorphin lift, and I feel so much better. Talking, so, talking of in shape, you were you were famous for saying you don't have to be fat to be strong. You were you were in incredible well, shape. It's, and, it's um, a good thing the camera is <laughs> on because I'm, I'm I, quite honestly, I'm I'm not in very good shape, but uh, my my body is uh, transforming very uh, rapidly, so I can I can tell difference every day now. So. Yes. Good to hear. So take take me back to what what did you do first? Because obviously you've been you've been very successful in powerlifting, bodybuilding, and strongman. What um what of the, the the disciplines did you did you focus on first? <laughs> well, the, uh, my main goal when I started to train was to become a bodybuilder because I saw pictures of Arnold, and I just wanted to look like that. But uh, apparently, I was quite strong uh, when I first started training at the age of fourteen. Uh, within that first week, I could bench press 100 kilo. I did 150 in squat and same in deadlift. So uh, there was a few powerlifters in the gym, so they encouraged me to compete. Uh, and uh, I won a Norwegian championship for youth uh, class already the first year. And they class to uh, up to 100 kilo and aged to up to 19 at the age of 15. So you, you won the under-19 class at 15? Yeah. <laughs> That's pretty good going. <laughs> so you were always just naturally strong to start with. Yeah, yeah. Being strong has been very easy for me. You know, uh, a lot people have to think about when I came to Strongman, I already actually done my career in my mind. But of course, when I found Strongman, I knew that there was a new ground for me. But I was already 30 years old when I started Strongman. And I had uh, done already powerlifting in world, uh, up till uh, third place in world championship uh, juniors and third place in European championship for senior. And I already been a pro, IPB pro in bodybuilding. So it was just like the end of my career. I got another 10 year in, in, uh, in Strongman. But of course that was my main thing looking back at it now because that's where I have all my great memories, all my great friends, and uh, my best accomplishments as well. 
Yeah, definitely. It's, it's amazing to think you, you, you thought you were done at 30 and then you found Strongman and, you know, you were one of the absolute best strongmen in the world, particularly late 90s, early 2000s. There was some, some great battles with like yourself, Magnus Samuelson, Hugo Girard, Pudzianowski, Zadrinus. You guys, are, that, that, that's the real kind of time I got interested in Strongman. So anyone of sort of my, my kind of age um, will always remember that you, got, you, you guys. I used to love watching, obviously, the World's Strongest Man Contest, but also the Strongman Champions Leagues. Uh, sorry, the um, Super Series. Yeah. Strongman Super yeah. Series. You had some awesome battles with the likes of Zadrinus and Hugo in, in, in those, didn't you? Yeah, well, I uh, I think from uh, World Strongest Man in 2000 till World Strongest Man 2002, I was on the podium in 50 shows in a row. Wow, <laughs> that's pretty impressive. And tw three times you were second at the Arnold as well, right? Yeah, yeah. That's the most annoying because uh, the first year, uh, there was a lot of controversial speaking about everything was rigged for... Uh, uh, Mark Henley uh, wasn't so. Maybe he has been been given the pro, uh, some right to to train with it. But you know, quite honestly, I, I it's the only time I've been coward. I've been really coward, and I, I'm I'm ashamed of myself from looking back on that because I should have beaten him because I was the strong man. You know, he was just a wrestler. Yeah. Of course, he was really strong, but. Uh, I uh, I was my mindset wasn't right, so that is the first and the only time I go into a competition without really think I could win. Really, but of course it wasn't rigged. That was just uh, ma I made up in my mind. So I, I, just because you've competed against him, how strong was Mark? Because obviously we hear, you know, you, you see the the stories in the WWE. He's a, he's an amazingly strong guy. He did a weightlifting before that, some powerlifting. But obviously you've competed against him as strongman. Was he legitimately that strong? Well, he he was good in power events like the deadlift. I think he did a, a double on four hundred kilo in in deadlifted with a horrible bar. Yeah, uh, and uh, I think. Um, What's his name again? And the the first man who did Andy four, Bolton. Andy Bolton, yeah, he had just done a thousand pounds, and he did the uh, three reps in four hundred. So he beat him, but barely, you know. And and he was a specialized powerlifter. Yeah. So he he was really strong, but of course he got beaten in uh, typical strongman events like uh, the Humvee uh, push. Uh, we had some uh, tire loading, if I can't remember. Correctly, so he he was good in the power events. Yeah, it would have been interesting to see him stay with Strongman and see how he could have done because obviously very very strong man. I, I think you know the way Strongman uh, uh, developed uh, during the, the years with you and the other guys now, uh, it's it's turned on to be a much more uh, well the way I actually like to see it. Yeah. You know, I I would prefer to compete now compared to what I, I would suited me better, I think, uh, though now than, than when I competed. But uh, it was a different time, you know, we, we did a lot of longer distances and so on with yeah. uh, smaller weights. So, but what I do miss is that uh, we didn't actually know so much about what the events were going to be. You could try to call one of the one of the guys who organized the competitions, but, uh, you know, call Ilka and ask, what's the event? Ah, I'm a strong man. That's the <laughs> only answer you can get from him. So, yeah. you know, we, we just knew it was going to be strongman events. And it was, that was fun, you know. It was more of a challenge to never know what you're really going to compete in before you were there. Did you, you, you like that side of things? Just not, I guess now it's become yeah, very... It was, it, it was, so I think that... I said it before, and I think I can still say it, that uh, Pudjanovski was probably the strongest athlete in the world, you know? And yeah. uh, him at his best, in that kind of strongman, there is, there is nobody in, even now could have touched him in yeah. that way of strongman. Oh, he was uh, so, so know, fast also, and fit. Of course, he, he would have struggled now with big weights and so on. And that's why I say I think it would suit me more with my my big deadlifts and my big squats and so on. Yeah, I, used to, I remember watching your, your training DVD when I was first yeah. getting into Strong. You did some big lifts on that, your big front squat as well. You're really good at front squatting. Well, I, I quite honestly, I only done it for, I did it only for a year before that. I started to front squat a year before that video was shot. 
and uh, I, I really enjoyed it, you know. It's, uh, and especially the way I front squat, because it's, if, if you don't just push with your legs, you're going to lose that weight, because yeah. you can't lean forward, you're just going to lose the bar. Yeah. So it's, it's yeah, it, it was fun, because I knew that I, I think my best ever was like five reps with 300 kilo. Wow, that's, that's some serious weight in, 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 uh, in front squat. That is definitely some serious work. That, that, that would challenge, you know, any of the top guys these days to, to be lifting those kind of weights. Tell us, what were, what were your best lifts? Uh, well, uh, the best deadlift I ever did was 425. Uh, but I did 410 already when I was a bodybuilder. Wow. Uh, so, um, I squatted 400 kilo with no equipment just the belt uh, and uh, my bench press was 260 but that was also as a bodybuilder I tore my pec so I was never a big bencher after that and you, you had the log lift record as well at one stage didn't you yeah that's a funny story because you know usually at that time you know you won log lift around 160 and for me to do 160 I didn't really need to train it at all and uh, I saved my energy for other things. So, but uh, they were going to have log lift for Max in uh, the uh, Super Series final in Stockholm. And Hugo was a uh, big thing for him to try to beat the world record. I think it was 180 or something. And uh, quite honestly, you know, I, I didn't think I could do a world record, but my goal was to try to push Hugo as far as I could to yeah. have us both miss so we can share points. But <laughs> to my surprise, I did it. And he could. So that was fun. <laughs> yeah, always. I mean, it's, it's quite funny when I look at the log. I don't know if you follow much Strongman these days, but obviously... Well, I, st I started to do it again, you know, because it was now... For me to have kidney failure again, uh, I, I quite honest, I've been... I've been have more kidney function now than I had the first time but mentally it's been a really really hard struggle this time yeah. because it was a little bit too early to get it back you know so it's been hard uh, yeah. now I found myself uh, well you know I'm starting to get in that point of my dialysis where I actually uh, are uh, at that point where you should get the kidney so it's should be just around the corner within the next five, six months. Good news. That's uh, good. News. And uh, as I said, back to training again. Yeah. Uh, I have settled down in Drummond. I sold my house, bought an apartment in Drummond. In great place in the middle of the town, beautiful town. Yeah. I have a supermarket in the first floor. I live on the top floor. So I can just take the elevator down to shop if I need <laughs> something. And... Uh, I have like a hundred meter to go to the nearest gym, so I I I am quite quite uh, calmed down and and quite uh, relaxed now, you know. I'm pleased to hear and, it's good. Uh, to hear. The, the only the sad part in my life now, of course, not sad, but Alexander moved out on Monday. Okay. Because he's, uh, he's starting school in another place in Norway, in Kristiansand, where we used to live. Yeah. So he's going to uh, the university down there to study uh, sports science. So, oh, fantastic. Uh, how, old, how old is he now? He's 20. Oh, God. I, I remember seeing him as a little kid. <laughs> yeah. He's older than me now. Yeah, it's funny. I've got, a, I've got a picture of you at World's Strongest Man, I think from 2008, on the, the back of the bus, and you're holding my baby at the time. She was four months old. She's now yeah. 11. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Um, yeah, no, it's... it's... Where does those years go by so fast? You know, it's, it's hard to believe. It is scary. It really is. Uh, I want to take you back to some of those years. Take me back to when, when was your first strongman contest? When, when, when was that? Can you remember? Yeah, uh, very much. Uh, it was... Uh, I had... Uh, just uh, made a bet with my friend. Uh, he was invited to compete in World Strongest, no, in Norway Strongest Man. Yeah. And he said that I, I will do it, but you have to promise me if they invite you for World Strongest Man, you have to do it. I said, okay. And you know, sometimes things turn to be reality. And 
it wasn't more than a month later that uh, Ilka called me. Okay. Apparently he had called uh, this guy who has this uh, bodybuilding magazine in Scandinavia and asked if he knew any strong Norwegian and he only knew me so from bodybuilding. So he, yeah. he gave him my number and asked me if I wanted to be in World Songs Man. <laughs> and uh, he had me competing first in uh, the Strongman Man of the North. Okay. Uh, up in Finland, uh, and it was uh, 15 guys started. I think I was in sixth place or so. But you know, I I I couldn't believe how I could lose. You know, because I was twice the size of most <laughs> of those guys. But uh, of course, Magnus Fair uh, was competing. Yuko Ala was competing. Uh, another guy. Uh, that was top four in uh, Europe's Strongest Man a few weeks before. So it was, you know, mostly very, very good guys. If, if that and was the first was World Strongest Man. <laughs> yeah, and second was World Strongest Man in uh, Mauritius. It's crazy to think how it was back then, where, like now, you can't imagine someone just strolling up to a national, like an international contest and then going to World's Strongest Man, but it's what you did. <laughs> Yeah, well, I, you know, I had the power, uh, yeah, of course. But uh, uh, I remember we had a car walk in that competition in Finland, and uh, it was so heavy, so most of the competitors couldn't lift it. Yeah. So they were allowed to have a pickup at the first try. Uh, but uh, you know, Ilka was ecstatic after that event, and I couldn't understand why because I was in eighth or ninth place. But he said. Do you realize that you lifted that car 20 times? <laughs> because, you know, I walked a few meters and I lost Put it the down, balance. up you I go. just bounced it up again. Most <laughs> of the guys couldn't do it once. <laughs> that was a funny story, actually. Yeah. Well, you, you became very good at things like the car walk and the, the yokes and stuff well, like that. Well, things suited me quite uh, good, you know. I In Finland, there was the first time I ever lifted stones. Uh, and I, I did them all. Five stones, uh, the heaviest 175. Yeah. Uh, the only thing I was really bad at was uh, was farmer's walk. Okay. Because as a bodybuilder, I used a lot of straps. Yeah. Through everything in biceps, shoulders, you know. So my grip wasn't the best. <laughs> <laughs> I, can, I I think I I I ran like five meters and then I lost the weight to the 140 kilo. So. So what? You know, the... something that I trained up, of course, over time. You can't, you can't be good at everything straight away, Sven. <laughs> no, no, no. You can't. You can't, of course. Yeah. So, and, Mauritius, uh, was Mauritius, sorry, was Mauritius 2005 or 2006? Uh, there was, no, that was the 96. Sorry, yeah, sorry, 96. Yeah. Okay. So, that was your first. And then, um, what, what, what did you do next? Because did you come back every year then, or did you have a year off? No, I was back in 97, uh, and I... I was leading before I hurt myself in the squat. Okay. Um, but we were so far ahead, me, Aula, and Samuelsson, that even after not competing in two events, I was still in fourth place. Wow. So uh, it was, of course, very annoying. Uh, but I was I was caught off guard because you know, of course, I, I at that point I started to understand a little bit more of the strongman. And I didn't think I had it in me to win there. And that wasn't my goal either. Yeah. My goal was to come and qualify for the finals and hopefully get top five. Yeah. But suddenly in the middle of that competition, I realized that now I'm, I'm ahead of everybody on points. And what's left is squat and deadlift and some loading. And, you know, I said to myself, you can't lose those events because I knew, of course, what everybody else could squat and deadlift. And I'm, I was thinking there's no chance they can beat me. And yeah. suddenly I realized that I could win. And I almost had a nervous breakdown there and then <laughs> because I wasn't prepared for it. And I think, you know, warming up was horrible condition, very cold and windy on the strip of Las Vegas. And, uh, and what you do then, you stress yourself up. And uh, with that first weight we did in squat, I think it was 270. I, I tried to do it as fast and as strong as possible. And what happened then, of course, I, rupt, I did a rupture in my, in my leg. So yeah. there, then and there it was over. I knew that. 
That's a shame because, like you say, I mean, at that time, your squat and deadlift were probably the best out of all of them. Yeah. Even yeah. Like... Well, they, I think they won that squat in that machine on 385, and uh, just before I left, I did five reps with 385, just to lose knee wraps. On, yeah. on regular squat, and that machine was quite much, much easier than regular weights. Yeah. So how long did the injury hold you back for? Uh, it was, no, not that long. A few, I knew it was because I had some ruptures as a bodybuilder, so I knew it was going to be good again. And of course, then I got really, now I'm going to win this thing. And uh, I was getting really good shape, but uh, then I got this, um, uh, is it crystal disease, they call it, when you got this infection in the balanced nerve in the ear. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, so I, I couldn't compete in 98. You're just affecting your balance and vision and stuff yeah. like that? Yeah. Okay. So I couldn't train. Yeah, I knew, I knew there was one um, that you missed, and then you came back 99. And, and 99. That uh, that's when I had found uh, my my love of my life, Lena, and uh, she was pregnant when we went to Malta. Yeah. And I was prepared. I was in really really good shape then, yeah. and uh, everything went smooth. But then, food poisoning. I lost ten kilos within the in in the qualifier. Yeah. Uh, luckily for me, I had a friend with me that was my coach on that competition, and he. He's uh, like a acupuncture, yep. so he 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 was able to have me well enough so I could do the event. So I barely made it through the final, and in the final, I think it was down to me and Aula in uh, in the stones. When I'm looking back at the whole competition, that's where yeah. I lost it, and I was just with a few centimeter on that one stone. Uh, so uh, you know, I lost. I lost. I was probably better in the moving events because of my weight loss uh, due to that uh, food poisoning. But uh, like Viking press and events like that and deadlift, I had to suffer a little, of course. Okay. But I still ended up in top three, and uh, for me that was uh, I, w I was very very happy with that placing because I knew that uh, placing in top three in the world's strongest man that was the door open for me to make a living out of strongman because now I knew that I was going to be invited to all the competitions I ever wanted you know yeah and I surely was uh, so that was a chance for you to then go I, I, professional yeah I, I could I could uh, I could scream and sing and do so much stupid shit that nobody else there at the time so you were very a lot of a lot of people paid me you know even a lot of organizers paid me starting money at that point well you you were really charismatic you used to kind of do all the the shouting and stuff and you, you're very similar to jean paul sigmason i guess you're like the the new version of him yeah well you know i enjoyed it so much you know it wasn't something i i planned it was just uh, i just very emotional when i competed and i, I loved the lifestyle so much yeah. For me to be in that, uh, in my shoes, uh, knowing that I was one of the strongest guys on the planet and uh, traveling the world with people I really enjoyed being with, you know, it was it was uh, the best time in my life. I, I asked and, quite, go on. I asked quite yeah. a few of the guys this, but where 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 do you think is your favorite place you've been to with Strongman? Obviously, you've been able to travel all over the world. Have you got a particular place that that really means something to you and that you enjoyed? For me, Africa. Yeah. Africa in general, South Africa, Zambia, because I I I love that temperature. You know, I I don't mind the heat as long as it's dry. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I I I I hate I hated to compete in Asia because it was so humid. The humidity but, uh, is a killer. But Africa, I I didn't care about the heat. I I loved it there, and uh, of course, with the memories of winning World Strongest Man there as well. Yeah. So let's, even, let's 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 go back a year before. The, yeah. the world's strongest man you came back um from 99 2000 you came second at world's strongest man yeah how was that uh, it, that uh that was when the other one yeah uh it was uh well i remember we had this conversation with jamie before the final started and he told me that uh, well mr carlson is starting to getting older now you have you know, have to remember you have you don't have that money here as these young guys 
Now we, now we have to win. Well, <laughs> of course, I, uh, I uh, somehow I lost a little of that uh, spirit in the beginning of that final yeah. because I had uh, an accident in I uh, think it was deadlift hold. The strap broke. Okay. And uh, instead of whining about that, you know, uh, I had a, a bad event after that. Uh, just because I, my spirit wasn't right and I was whining. So uh, I can't remember who, but somebody told me now, I have to show them now who is the king of this fucking event. So sorry, my language. And, uh, and then I won the last three events uh, with the Pingle's finger. Uh, and what was after that? Can't remember. And Stones, the last event was Stones. And I, that's that's when I first time somebody. I, I, yeah, I was the first guy to do it in thirty seconds. All the stones. Oh wow! Oh, that's cool. So that wow. was a world record then in the final. Now you you were really good at things like the stones, the the fingers, fingers. Obviously, all the statically power power events. You were you were awesome. But um, coming coming second, how did that make you feel? Did you think, you know, you've been third? Did you you come second? I, well, I I, I I wasn't. Well, I I was. I felt that I was on the right track and I was saying to myself now you have to win it next year because now you have gone this 3-2 uh, to finish now in the in first place yeah that's what so I was, to, that's what I was trying to get yeah. at. was it was it like oh I, I should have won or or was it just confidence building each year you got third the year before uh, the, you got second my confidence was so high coming in in 2001 the only thing I feared uh, was not any of the competitors because I knew I don't know how but sometimes you just feel it I knew that nobody could beat me I just I just felt it there is no chance nobody can beat me uh, that was my spirit that was my attitude the only fear I had was that it was a lot of talk you know because first we had uh, 9-11 at that time you know yeah. so it was almost cancelled okay uh, wow I didn't know, I didn't know that uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, we, we actually we were in. I competed in the U.S. We we flew to St. Louis the first day they start flying again. Me and Samuelson. Oh wow! And uh, and no, sorry, me and Yarek, me and Yarek. Yarek Dimmick, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so uh, it was a competition with a lot of people. Uh, I think uh, I won it. Uh, Yarek was third. Can't, and Phil Fister was second. I think. Okay. Uh, so, uh, but uh, for, I, I remember that year because in all events I competed in that year, I only, only won goal and that was to win that World Strongest Man. So uh, I remember we were in Prague for the Prague Grand Prix. And uh, in the morning of the competition, I went down to the gym in the hotel and I deadlifted uh, three... Uh, triples on uh, 315 deadlift in the morning of the competition and Janne came down and said what are you doing? I said I'm, <laughs> I have back I have back yes but you're competing today no 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 I'm not competing I'm only training today I'm going <laughs> to compete in uh, October I mean the world's you just came because into their heads it, it was a little mental thing for me because if I if you Say to yourself that you're only going to do this like half fast this competition. You're never ending up doing that. Yeah. But going to the gym in the morning and training like an animal, I had to do it half fast. There was <laughs> energy left. See, and I, if, you, if you beat yourself like competing just before a big event, if you, if you use too much of your adrenaline... Uh, storage units in, in your body it, it takes time to build that up again yeah, so definitely. i was scared like hell to lose that before the world's strongest man because i was trying to save my energy for that because it doesn't matter how hard you train you can never replica a, as hard as a competition is of course and you, you want to how hard you try to train you can't you, do it and you want to make sure you're at your best when it yeah. counts not three yeah. weeks before or, or whenever it was yeah, exactly. So going going into the 2001 World Strongest Man, you were the heavy favorite. I remember watching it, and yeah. they, they were going around asking all the, the guys who's going to win, and almost everyone 
just was picking you to win that year. Yeah, yeah, I remember. And, um, and you know, I, uh, I, I never uh, felt, uh, uh, you know, bad or like it, it didn't put pressure on me that way. It gave me more energy to know that everybody feared me much more than I was scared of losing, you know, because yeah. I, and yes, I know what I mean, and they know it too, you know, <laughs> more like that. Yeah, well, a lot of that mental, you know yourself. And it I, is, know, it is. If, if they don't think they can beat you, then they're not going to. Exactly, exactly. The, I see, we, yeah, you've seen as well, a lot of strange things happen in competitions. Oh, of course. Like, like, uh, like Mark Felix, have you, how many times have you seen him lose competitions because of his nerves? Yeah, yeah. Those last he, he, even, they even can mess up the simplest events in the world. Yeah. Like 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 uh, a Hercules or something like that. You should you shouldn't be able to do that wrong. <laughs> yeah. But it's possible. Yeah, you do see some some athletes' the nerves can really get to them. I've, I've seen some guys that are extremely strong in the gym, and then it comes to competition time, and they just they just you can see them physically shaking before they go out. And yeah. The events. Other uh, British guy, that great guy, that uh, the one that uh, do MMA now. Oli Thompson. Yeah, he was unbelievable in Britain, but as soon as you get him out of Britain, he was shit. <laughs> he, yeah, he couldn't do anything. He was so nervous. Yeah, and he, he was extremely strong in the gym, like yeah. static strength. He was up there with the absolute best in the world, especially back then. I mean, Oli Ollie was a 410 deadlifter yeah. when being a 400 deadlifter was, was like just, you know, there was one or two guys that could do it yourself, maybe one or two others. But um, obviously now, almost everyone can deadlift 400 kilos. Oh, it's crazy. This, this strange thing, this strange thing, I, I, I'm, very, I'm very amused by this because it's only in, in, in strongman. The powerlifters are still struggling with it. Very and true. Why in hell don't they ask you guys how to deadlift? Because in every strongman composition now, at least six, seven, sometimes 10, 12 people do 400 or more. It is crazy. Obviously, in strongman, we've got the straps, so there's that issue. That um, you know, I think I think I think they're different types of deadlifts. But I do agree. I mean, there's a there's a young guy now um, who who just recently pulled four thirty uh, four seventy five in the gym as a sumo deadlift, which is is crazy. But um, yeah, there's not that many guys that that have brought the deadlift up in terms of strongman style. But powerlifting is a lot stricter. For, for but the, still, it's so many kilos over, so it's like it is. Doesn't matter. Like like Haftor, his five hundred and one lift was unbelievable. Yeah, it really was. And, it, and he, he could still breathe afterwards. Yeah, yeah. But uh, I, I, what I didn't like was to hear him. I didn't know that that he was so whining about uh, Eddie winning uh, the, that in two seventeen. Yeah, they they've obviously got an issue between them. I I think um, you know I I like both the guys. I get on well with Hafthor. Yeah. And, and he was he was upset in 2017. But to be fair to him, I mean he 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 did put that post up. But then be, to be fair to him, he took it down. And then obviously it's all kicked off again. But they're fighting each other. They're trying to build up the fight. It's um, yeah. They're going to fight. That's they're right. Going to fight. Yeah. Could you imagine <laughs> you, you and like Pudzianowski having a fight back in the day? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I am. What I am scared of is that they just going go go in both of them and just waltzing around, you know, just hugging each other and dancing, you know. <laughs> that would be really embarrassing. It just had to be like a real fight. I I, I hope it's good. They're both great yeah. athletes. They're both you know incredible guys and both very determined guys. So I'm sure they'll they'll put the work in, and um, fair play to them. They're both getting an amazing payday. A lot more yeah. they'll get in strong man. So. You know, I, I, we, 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 we can fight if you want for a million dollars. <laughs> yeah. But there, there are some bad blood between them. It's not only... Unfor uh, unfortunately, yeah. They, they, yeah. they don't like each other. But um, I guess not everyone liked each other. I mean, you, you, you had some good friends in, in Strongman. Was there anyone that you didn't like? <laughs> no, I wasn't any, I wasn't, no, there wasn't anybody I could get along with. But, uh, of course, there are some people I like better than others, of course. But, uh, who, 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 who were your good friends in Strongman? Well, uh, of course, uh, I, I hang around a lot with Magnus because we were both Scandinavian. And uh, 
and of course this uh, brotherhood with me and and uh, and Yarek has been legendary, you know. So, uh, but uh, uh, before Yarek came, it was mostly with Jan and, and, and Magnus, because you know people from the same country seem to stick together, and we were like it's from the same country almost. So, yeah. Do you still talk to any of them? Uh, once in a while, not yeah. that much, but with Yarek, I have stayed in touch a lot. Oh, that's good. That's nice to hear. I had my 50th birthday in Poland. Really? Yeah. That's cool. I, I remember going to a few of Yarek's competitions. He always put on good competitions over in Poland. Yeah. And, and some fun I afterwards. I haven't heard from him lately, so okay. I don't know what he's up to now. No, I haven't. I've, I've been trying to get hold of him to come on here, actually, but yeah. I, I haven't heard from him. Hopefully, if, he, if he's watching, he's always welcome to come on and yeah. chat. No, so we're winning 2000 and, um, 2001. Talk us through that show. What was it like to, to finally become the world's strongest man? It was, I remember the first thing I did after, after uh, I had got my, the prize ceremony. We went back to the hotel and I just bought a Diet Coke. Uh, had some of my favorite music put on and just sat down by the pool and just enjoy that moment, you know, because for me, it was a long journey. Uh, I've been so close uh, to become like the best in the world in bodybuilding and in powerlifting, but I, I never made it to the absolute top, you know, I've always been two or three. Yeah. And uh, that was so important for me to win that. So it was, it was so, you know, that moment, one of the best moments in my life. And uh, I'm sure. the, even better, you know, the, that upcoming year, the year after, you know, everywhere I went, every competition, every exhibition, I was picked up in limos, I was taken to radio, TV shows, and always when they presented, I'm the world's strongest man, 2001. <laughs> After you know, just to hear that, you know, yeah, please <laughs> <laughs> keep saying it. It sounds good. Yeah, <laughs> no, fantastic. It's um, it must be, it must be a, a lovely feeling. Obviously, you've worked your whole life. You started at fourteen lifting weights to yeah. finally get called the world's strongest man. Um, you kept going after a, a few years after that, and obviously, you did extremely well in the um, Super Series and and the Arnold's. Um, out of all the contests that I can remember watching you in, I think the events in 2004 really suited you. Yeah, was that uh, that year when we had those duels? Yes. In Bahamas? Yeah, that's the yeah. one. It was a very yes, I, I t yes, because then I had my, my ghost, you know, took me again from a squat. Yeah. Same thing, same thing. Too eager to do it fast. And boom, there it was. And I, I think that, you know, I can say that in my mind, I can take apart almost every competition I didn't win and win it. You know, what, if you see what I mean. I think we can, a lot of us can do that. Yeah. You know, the ifs and buts, but of but course, of course, to, to be able to win the world's strongest man, you need to be strong enough to win it three times to get just that one win, I think. You need that luck, don't you? Yeah, because you need everything to smile to. Well, I, I and, said, uh, and uh, but I think I think you're right that uh, injury free that that should have been like a walk in the park for me uh, because all the events were like very suited for me. Yeah, and it was it was just it was it a hamstring tear you got on the the squat? Uh, no, it was on the front. Okay, squat. and I, I just remember watching you. You yeah. had the, you were calling them to 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 get the the racks in. Yeah, and the barrels were still going in. It looked very painful. Yeah. Yeah, it was stupid, but you know, it's some sometimes you lose it, sometimes you win it. But uh, I think the the most bitter lose lost I uh, the worst I ever lost was uh, second year at the Arnolds when Sigrunas beat me. Yeah, because he had never beat me in a competition before that, and certainly never beat me in an event like that, like that farmer's walk thing. Yeah. And I saw all the best guys in the world when it came to the grip, like Phil Fister, Marius, Raymond, nobody could carry that frame. Yeah. And when I did it, 
and quite easily as well. I was just surprised that it was, it didn't feel so heavy. So I was just, I was just almost didn't start, you know, you know, but, but, uh, and I knew he can't beat me, but then he did. <laughs> Zadronis does that. I remember doing um, a farmer's was, walk. The, the, the strength, you know, it was the first, this was the first time. Remember, he had yeah. never beat me in a competition before, hardly in any events. Yeah. And, and I, I just, uh, well, he, 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 same thing happened the year after. We were same. We were so far ahead of everybody else. It was me and him down to that farmer's walk again. Same thing happened. He beat me. The, the third year, that was the year I was out of the podium myself. It doesn't matter with that fucking farmer's walk. Then I beat him. <laughs> he's, he's got a unique habit of doing that. When he needs to do well at something, he, he can pull it out the bag. He was even injured, you know, he was struggling with something on his foot, but of course it couldn't have been too bad. But still <laughs> he was, something was wrong because he's not sitting down and whining if it's nothing. Yeah. So, but uh, yeah, he, he pulled it out like, and it was a lot of money, you know, from yeah. first to second place that year. Yeah, the honest. Uh, way Pays too much money. <laughs> so I, I was looking at some old competitions the other day. Zadrunas has stopped me from winning at least 10 international shows. I was looking how many times I've been second to Zadrunas in different contests. <laughs> yeah. I was like, damn, this guy's annoying. <laughs> yeah, but he is. He is. <laughs> but but you know, it, it, after a while, you get used to it. But that was the first time, you know, yeah. he, he had never beaten me before. And, you know, I think I thought I had him on the... Yeah, but I think even now I know that if if uh, he had to walk before me, yeah. I don't think he would have done it. Yeah, I think what what saved him to do it was that I did it, because I think that he wouldn't have a mindset to do it after seeing all those great guys miss. Yeah, but when when I did it, he had to make a run for it, just blow fools that will pull out. Because it wasn't that long, you know, didn't have to hold it for so long. Yes. Because I tried to, some people said I had a bit bad grip. No, I had a very, very strong grip, but not for long. Yeah, the endurance side of it wasn't so good. Yeah, because first. we have done events like uh, in Canada, we did some wheelbarrow stuff where we added weight and just walked three meters. And uh, I was up there and in second place, I was just beaten by, uh, I beat uh, Hugo because when they couldn't, when, he, when the Hugo's legs couldn't take it anymore, I could still hold it for that yeah. time I needed to hold it. Yeah, and, no, it's, I, I, I prefer the heavier grip events. I, when it's just for too long, I tend to just find the blood pumps up in the arm. Yeah, everything, oh, I think that, you know, if the, if I've been top three in Hercules all a few times, but and even won it that one time, but that was when winning time was like 22 seconds, <laughs> because yeah. then you're gonna have a field of six, seven guys who can't have uh, hold it at all. Yeah, yeah, that's how I like grip events. Really heavy, really yeah. hard, and then half the field not getting it at all, and then a few guys that can get to 20 or 30 seconds. That's perfect. <laughs> yeah, well, I I think that. That 50 seconds to a minute, you can even see it, you know, if you have a lineup, you can have guys that are doing bad in everything, but they still can do that a minute, you know. Yeah. But I can't. I stop back to four, you know, no matter what. <laughs> Anything over 30 seconds is too yeah. long. <laughs> so after, after 2004 Worlds, the, the strongman split, and you, you decided to go with IFSA. What, um, what made you go with IFSA and not stick with... Well, well strictly because of the money. Okay. We were offered, yeah. It was only because of the money, because I was... Uh, I knew that uh, uh, I had reached my peak, and uh, no matter what I did, I uh, knew that I was losing yeah. it, you know. You just, slowly, the, but, yeah. you just wanted the payday, yeah? <laughs> Yeah, but, you know, I told myself even though that, you know, in, when I was at my best, like 2000 to 2002, when I wasn't out of the pole then for two years there, and uh, I said to myself, that day I have to fight to be in the top five, I, I, I'm quitting. Yeah. And approximately that's what I did in 2006. So yeah. I, 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 I could still uh, occasionally come on the pole again, but 
I needed to have everything right for me, you know. Mm-hmm. And, and it, when I start to use more time stretching out, warming up, and physio, then you actually spend training. That's when you know the train is gone. Do you do you, do you have a, t- a point where you you realized you were past your best, or is yeah. it, it's, hard, it's hard it's hard to accept? I think, isn't it? I, it was probably the, that world championship in IFSA. Yeah, was that two thousand five? Yeah, yeah. It's, even myself, I it, now looking back, I, you sort of it's it's hard at the time because you don't realize you sort of. You know, I think I think when you for you that two thousand and one, you were incredible, and you were hungry. And then yeah. after after you won that world's strongest man, do you feel like the hunger wasn't as good to win it win it again? I know you went when I trained for uh, uh, world's strongest man every year up until two thousand one. I usually puked up. On every training, yeah. But I never puked after two thousand. <laughs> yeah, I, I think. Got, but then again, uh, I, 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 I was of course training hard, but I trained hard for the Arnolds, and training hard for the Arnolds is that's not puking training anyway. It's so heavy, isn't it? Yeah, it's, it's more, yeah, of lifting heavy weights. Yeah. So I, I usually had to build, rebuild my physique every year for that because. Yeah. For me, uh, in a normal strongman season, I, would, I, I like to weigh around 135 kilos. But at the Arnold's, I, I was between 150 and 60. So it was a different game. So I had to spend another month after the Arnold's to lose that weight again. Yeah. If, like, like you said earlier, I mean, you, you would have suited the, the modern style of strongman. You know, the guys are so big now. They're, they're so strong statically. But I mean, some of them still move very well, but it's not... You, you don't ever find a 90 kilo farmer's walk anymore. It's, no. it's you know, 160 plus. That was, that was even before me. Uh, the lightest uh, farmer's walk we did was 120, but we did that for 75 meters. Yeah. But I, I, was that uh, uh, Darren who put that in uh, a competition like five, six years ago? Yeah. 125 kilo farmer's walk for 75 meters yeah Most of the guys couldn't do it it's funny i i was in that contest yeah. and i i blitzed it i went really fast yeah. i was i was in first place i was one of the only few people to to finish to do it yeah because but, when well, saw that guys couldn't do it yeah, yeah. but the, the, the one guy who a week before he was weighing 180 kilos i was like there's no way this guy's gonna beat me you know zadrunus of Iscus, Coming yeah. in, he, he was there to break the log record. He wasn't there to break the farmer's record. You know, I, I did a really good time and I, I was confident I had the win. The bastard went and beat me. <laughs> did he? <laughs> yeah. And I, I don't know how he does it, but um, yeah, that was a... a, a, because, like a like, uh, I remember most of the big guys couldn't do it. Yeah. But as you know, with him, he just sometimes, when he has to, he finds yeah. a way. He, yeah. he, was in, he was in incredible shape that year. He, he was literally breaking records on everything. Yeah. Um, yeah, it was a tough, the, the 75 meters, guys start to fatigue once they get that, because it was three turns, or, or yeah. no, it was, it was two yeah. turns, but it was a very long distance. Yeah. And the way back, people were really struggling. Yeah, I remember. Oh, it's, um, it is incredible. I mean, you, you after, after Strongman, you got involved with like the TV side of things in Norway, didn't you? Yeah, yeah. How was that? Well, I, uh, I needed to do something, of course, and then uh, I... Uh, I uh, did some uh, research and found out that uh, World Strongest Man was up for sale. So, uh, and uh, I said it through my whole career that when I stop competing, I want to try to do something for Strongman. Okay. Because a lot of people here in Norway had criticized me when I was competing, you know, why can't you get me in shows, blah, blah, blah. And I said, I, I'm competing myself. I can't be anybody else's coach or manager or whatever, you know. When I stop competing, I will do that. And, uh, well, I did that for over 10 years, 12 years. Yeah. But um, then, of course, TV stopped. They, they wanted to have a break from it. They couldn't, didn't want it anymore. And in Norway, TV situation is like this. There is two blocks. So it's not like, it's a lot of channels. But all are under the same umbrella. It's only two umbrellas. Okay. So um, then it was over and I didn't, I, I was so fed up with everything. 
uh, it was too much for me. I, I started uh, when I when I got involved with Champions League. It was too much, you know. I was uh, I was traveling too much. Uh, I was I, I didn't live healthy. I uh, I uh, I burned, you know. I burned up really quick. Yeah. So it was when it was over. I was kind of relieved, you know, for a long time. As I, I haven't even watched Strongman for a couple of years. But I started to watch it now again. Actually, what I started to look at was uh, was some of the films with Brian, you know, yeah. because he's done a lot of things with the humor in it, you know, for fun. You know, I, I've seen some of the things, and of course that uh, series that they had on uh, on History Channel. Yeah, yeah, that was good fun to watch. Uh, has a lot, done a lot for the sport, you know, for them to go mainstream like that. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be good. Uh, unfortunately, the series two doesn't seem to be happening, but it would be good if they they do do it. I think, um, like you say, it's really brought a lot more people into strongman and seeing what we're all capable of, and yeah. and just seeing the seeing the personality of the athletes is important. It's, um, yeah, you know I, that's what I did with the uh, world strongest man for Norway. Uh, the competition, I I I tried to show everybody. Remember, I did a lot of features with you guys where I, I interview I, about I, everything you know I, I remember you know, being because in... some some people said to me you know ah why do you ask stupid question how much do you bench press how much do you eat I said I don't interview you for me yeah I'm not interviewing you for all the knuckleheads in the sport yeah. I interview you for the other million people in Norway doesn't know anything about you guys who thinks you are idiots. <laughs> I can show you that you can actually read and write and, and say your names and that you have other interests as well. It's very true. I actually remember you taking me off to do a, a, a vignette for um, the Norwegian promotion. Yeah. And you, you drive like a crazy man. <laughs> Yeah, that was just to get a reaction. I did that to everybody. And I, and I even pretended that I didn't follow the traffic at all. Yeah, you just kind of spinning around the road. Uh, where, where was it? LA, I think we were. Uh, uh, yeah, it was LA. <laughs> I was fearing for my life. I didn't think I was going to be competing that year. <laughs> well, that was, I, I, I did it because I wanted to have that reaction. <laughs> what's this crazy guy doing no it was good fun it was good fun yeah Sven it's been so good to to catch up with you do you think um do you think you you, you want to get more involved with strongman again or are you just enjoying watching for now well first of all now I need to uh, get a new kidney because focus on the health right now I can't I can't travel you know the, the situation is now I can't travel and if I want to be involved with Strongman, I need to be able to travel again. Of course. And I've been contacted for some different projects. But uh, actually, quite honestly, what I, what I would like to do now is actually, you know, I have a lot of other interest in politics, in history, in science and stuff like that, that people don't know anything about me for. So actually, I would like to maybe do a, pod, a webcast more like... Uh, like a Joe Rogan thing, you know, instead. Cool. Do you like, what, what kind of scientific, uh, scientist things? Do you like space? Do you like kind of the... Yes, yeah. very, very interested in that. I love, I love all now, that. Yeah. Like now it was, I didn't know if you follow this, but, you know, NASA admitted, admitted for the first time ever that uh, they have entities that's not from this planet. Really? I haven't seen yeah. that. Have you seen that video that they call the Jimbo video? No. It's like they they film like a UFO okay. flying, and uh, there's two of them. One tremendous speed, and this thing is turning yeah. in, in that speed, and it's not possible. There is no aircraft in the world who can do that without you know break your neck or whatever. Yeah. So it looks like they have their own force field around it, but the strange thing is that it was published in the New York Times about a couple of years ago, first time. It's like 10 years old, I think. Yeah. And uh, that, that was one thing that New York Times published it. But I think it's now a couple of months since uh, uh, Pentagon recognized it and said that this okay. is not from this world. And uh, that's, it, it doesn't seem like much, but that, that sentence, it's the first ever time that it's publicly announced from any government on this planet that we are actually visited by. And yeah, because obviously we, we have people say it all the time, but to have something like that, admit it, is interesting. Obviously, with the size of the universe, I think there has to yeah. be something, there just has to be. You know, that, that absolutely fascinates me that, you know, space, planets, 
solar yeah. system, you know, the, the, the size of, of the universe. It's just incredible. It makes me feel quite in, insignificant, but I, I like to think there's definitely some form of life out there. I don't know where, I don't know how far. Well, you know, the, 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 the thing is that I think that these entities that are probably like a million years, maybe more ahead of us, when you can take, uh, when you take away the distance of things, yeah. Because they have made a propulsion system that you actually you you bending time and space in front of the craft. Yeah. So if, if you don't you not uh, you don't need a, a a spacecraft to be aerodynamic. You know it could be whatever shape or form because it's not depending on that. And when that can Happen, that yeah. can move in a speed that you can move in like light years within days. Yeah. Then you can remove the, the distances. Then you can understand why we actually are visited. Yeah. And uh, they're not that far away from probably even manage it themselves, you know. When you see how far technology's come in the last 20 years, never mind yeah. 100 years, it's, it's, it's amazing to think what's, what's going to be possible in the future. Yeah, if, if you only take a look at what's, uh, what is uh, possible now, like I saw this uh, Japanese team, they make a, a blanket and made a guy invisible. You know, it was like some distortion in the air, yeah. but that's what they show the public. <laughs> they probably have a suit that can be invisible. Yeah, no, it's uh, the, the advancements are, are pretty crazy. I, I used to think certain things, you know, you, you have that, oh, it's impossible, but now I'm quite open-minded and, you, you know, you, you see what people are capable of, what, advancements have been made in in technology and, and things yeah. like that who, who knows what we could we could end up seeing in, in the future it's exciting i i like the the thought of colonizing like space you know different places yeah. go to mars that kind of thing i'm i'm a very big fan of Elon musk you know i, oh, yeah. I really follow everything he does he's a an, an exceptional person just yeah. you know, the, the way his mind thinks yeah. is just completely different to to the norm but so that's something we could talk about uh, another yeah. time, you know. It's, it's, it's been so good to, to chat with you again, Sven, and, and see Thank you. Thank you, Lawrence, for having me. It's been a great time. I wish you all the best with the kidney, and um, hopefully I get to see you in person soon. Yes, you're more than welcome. I'm, I'm living by myself now, so I spare bedroom. <laughs> well, guys, I hope you enjoyed the catch-up with Sven Carlson, Sven Viking Power Carlson, one of the absolute superstars of Strongman from the 90s and the 2000s. Sven, if people want to contact you, are you on social media at all? <laughs> Barely. Send me off an email, uh, wsm2001icloud.com, so if you want awesome. to. Brilliant. Yeah. I, I, I am occasionally on Facebook, but not more than maybe once a month. That's all right. It took me a while to get hold of you, but I'm so glad we got you on. Yeah, Guys, I you. hope you enjoyed the show. We'll be back with more Strength Legends soon. Sven, take care.